Welcome to Ryan Make. I've been obsessed with fire tornadoes for years now, and after watching countless YouTube videos, it seemed time to catalog a number of the ways that people have already made them, as well as time to innovate a completely new way to make fire tornadoes. So that way we could take them from this to this. So stick around to the end of the video to see the brand new way that I have for making fire tornadoes. After doing extensive research, AKA watching a ton of YouTube videos, I've boiled it down to three main ways people typically make fire tornadoes. But today, I'm gonna to show you four. And if you're interested in how-to guides to be able to make these yourself, check out our link below for our Instructables page for step-by-step -step guides. Now, since you are working with fuel and fires, it is extremely dangerous, so please take every precaution. This first way you may have seen on The Backyard Scientist, where he takes a glass tube, cuts it in half into two half cylinders, and then offsets it slightly to create that vortex flow of air. Now, glass is hard to cut, so we're going to try to see if we can get the same effect by forming two acrylic sheets into half cylinders, offsetting them as well, see if we can achieve that same fire vortex. So how did we go about forming our acrylic to make this method work? Well, for that, we're gonna have to take a trip to the kitchen. Next, we've already have our oven preheated to 225. We're gonna go and put our trash can into the oven. And you're gonna probably need to take out a tray or two. And then what you do, so you balance that on the rack and then you balance your acrylic sheet on your trash can. Okay, our cookies, I mean uh, acrylic, is done. It's uh, nice and soft and it started to form around our trash can. Let's pull it out and give it a look. Again, remember, we're at a pretty high temperature, so be careful, wear gloves. So as you can see, we have a nice curvature in our acrylic. We're gonna use the trash can a little bit to help form it a bit more and then take it off. So we're gonna test our formed acrylic sheets to see how well they do. So we're gonna light up our fuel. There we go, look at that impressive tornado. Now you'll get a more consistent tornado when you have better form sheets. These are a little bit offset, but as you can see, we can still get a very effective tornado. Now be careful because through our testing, we noticed our acrylic heating up and becoming more pliable. So what we've learned from this is that this is an interesting way of demonstrating the concept, but not a viable method for obtaining a long-term demonstration. The second but most common method I've seen that we're gonna look at is using a mesh cylinder or trash can to spin around our flame source. This works by replacing the convecting air with air that's coming in off axis as the can spins, create our desired spiral effect. I picked up a Lazy Susan from the hardware store so we can give this method a spin. We're going to place our fuel source inside the mesh basket and light it up and give it a spin. That's an impressive, just very tight fire tornado. But this is the size I've always seen this you know, a few cotton balls in the very center of our mesh waste basket. Can we make it bigger? Okay, so we're gonna try going a little bit bigger. We're going from this small clay tray to a full pie tin. See how well scaling this up can go. Okay, we got a much bigger base flame. Oh, and it's just a beautiful 
large flame as we spin. Now try to put it out carefully. Carefully, Ryan. That was great. So the third method we're going to use, and the most common I've seen for large demonstrations, uses a configuration of fans set around the fuel source slightly off axis to create that spiralized airflow that we're looking for. Now, I did not want to go out and buy 10 or 12 box fans during this time of crisis, so I miniaturized the idea so I could use a handful of 40 millimeter computer fans I had lying around from another project. So while most demonstrations try to scale this idea up using larger and larger fans, I wanted to see if we could scale this idea way down. So here in our setup, we have five 40 millimeter fans configured around to see if we can get this to work. And now we've arrived at the fourth method and my personal favorite because it's completely new. I've been obsessed with bladeless fans for years now and I've been looking for a reason to make one and a big one at that. So making a giant fire tornado using the world's largest bladeless fan seemed to fit the bill so perfectly that you could say that I was a fan. I have a detailed guide for how to make this bladeless fan on my Instructables page. The link is in the description below. But since I am so excited, I want to talk about how this fan works a little bit first. So I am extremely excited with how our bladeless fan has turned out. It went from a bucket to this, and it's impressive. It is super powerful. And I, I just wanted to show it before we turned it into hopefully the most compact fire tornado generator out there just to show you what this setup can do. I'm going to turn this leaf blower on and you'll watch this thing work. So what we're planning on doing is then putting in a bunch of veins to help direct the air in a spiral fashion coming out of our bladeless fan to then hopefully create that swirling vortex shape that we truly need to make this an effective fire tornado generator. And the brand new method that I'm premiering on this video is to use a bladeless fan with a series of veins to direct the air in a spiralized fashion to create a large and beautifully symmetric fire tornado. And now we have the summer's hottest fireplace attachment, the bladeless fan fire tornado former machine. Okay, we've been testing different ways of making fire tornadoes and now is time for what I think is gonna be my favorite. We've got a little charcoal grill to hold our fuel and we have our bladeless fan with these veins that form our air into this spiral fashion. So we're gonna light this up and we're gonna see how well it works. So we'll let the, the fire take hold and then. There we go, beautiful fire tornado. Look at that. Now, if only we could make it bigger. So, in our previous uh, test, we had a, a small modifier, and now we're gonna try to really size it up. This is probably four or five times larger. So we gotta really juice this and see where it goes. And then you do the smart thing and move your large fuel container away from your experiment and you light it. And then we turn on our fire tornado source. Perfect column of flame. 
with most fire projects, and this one is no different. It is always fun to scale them bigger and to test them at night to see how impressive the results can be. I don't know about you, but this project has gotten me really fired up. It was a blast building these different methods and then testing them together, and then also innovating a completely new method with the bladeless fan. In a future video, I'm hoping to make a permanent installation around an outdoor fire pit, so that way I can have a fire tornado on command for S'mores Night. This project took a lot of question asking, researching, testing, and innovating to get the results I was after. If you like asking big questions, or if taking cross-disciplinary or lateral approaches really lights your fire, then I would ask that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, so that way you can be the first to hear about new things on Ryan Make. And if you have some feedback, I'd love to hear it in the comments, or ideas for future projects, or big questions you would just like to see answered. But until next time, I'm Ryan Make, and this is where we figure it out. Thanks. The beacons of Gondor are lit! Gondor calls for aid! And Ryan Make shall answer!